Good morning, everyone. My name is Suzanne Templin, and I coordinate the webinars for Houseman Johnson Insurance. I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Evaluating the Effectiveness of Your Safety Process, presented by Rick Barton. Today's webinar will run about 45 minutes. After the webinar, we will have a question and answer session. If you have a question during the webinar, feel free to type it into the question feature, and Rick will address it during the Q&A portion. After the webinar is over, there will be a short survey we are hoping you can fill out for us. A note that this webinar has been certified for continuing education credits by the Society for Human Resources Management and the Human Resources Certification Institute. Details on those credits will be provided to you at the conclusion of this webinar. Also, please be aware that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for review on the webinar archives of our website. If you do not want to participate in a recorded webinar, you may want to close the application at this time. You will receive a follow-up email from us later today or tomorrow with a link to the recording. I would now like to introduce you to our presenter for today's webinar, Rick Barton. Rick has over 20 years of experience in safety and risk control, working with clients in many industries, including construction, mining, trucking, manufacturing, and hospitality. He specializes in assessing risk for the clients of Houseman Johnson Insurance to reduce loss potential. Through safety assessments and loss analysis, RISC develops solutions which include safety management techniques, training, and engineering. Additionally, he has been asked to speak at local and national safety conferences on topics such as how to manage safety on a job site and what it takes to be a safety leader. Rick is an authorized instructor of OSHA regulations, construction, and general industry regulations. He is an active member of the Wisconsin Transportation Builders Association, Associated Builders and Contractors, the Wisconsin Chapter of the American Society of Safety Engineers, and the Association of General Contractors. He is also on the advisory board of the Safety Studies Department at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Obviously, he has a wealth of knowledge on this topic, and we are very thankful that he could share some of his wisdom with us today. Welcome, Rick. Well, good morning. Thanks, Susan. Um, good morning, everyone. Glad we could make it on this nice sunny day. I hope everyone will uh, hang on until the uh, tournament starts at 11. We've got a little time before it starts. So uh, let's, let's all buckle up and uh, go for a little ride about uh, discussing your safety program. I put this uh, presentation together based on a previous webinar we did in the fall uh, where my cohort, Rich Johnston, uh, presented on how to develop a safety program. So we thought as a follow-up to that, now that you've had a chance to develop it, or for those of you that have developed safety programs, what are you doing to determine if you are getting your bang for your buck, or is it effective, or is it just something that happens out of luck, or maybe really it's really not systematic? So that's why we titled it Evaluating the Effectiveness of Your Safety Process. And I'll spend some time going through some areas that uh, you may want to consider in evaluating your safety process to make sure that it is what you think it is and doing what it should be doing at your facility, your organization, or out on your sites. So with that, we have some learning objectives I'd like to uh, go over first before we get started. The first thing is I'm, I'm going to go through reasons or get you to understand reasons to evaluate your safety process. We all have different reasons. and Many of us want the end goal, and that is zero injuries, but there are other reasons that we also evaluate our safety process. The next reason would be understanding the difference between a leading and a trailing indicator. I'm a big proponent of looking at your leading indicators. They really tell me what's going to happen in the future, and trailing indicators are important and a good barometer, but not the only thing we should be looking at. We'll discuss that for a few minutes. We'll, find, we'll also discuss how to evaluate the safety process. I'll be able to provide you with some tools um, that we have used here at Houseman Johnson to uh, work with our customers on evaluating their safety process. Uh, I'll also have a few links uh, for systems that you may want to uh, consider uh, outside of the Houseman Johnson applications. We'll also spend some time learning uh, what tools are available to evaluate your safe safety process. That's where I get more involved with the Houseman Johnson uh, process. We have a couple different processes we use. Uh, depending on what your outcomes are or how in, in detail you want the process 
to be. And then finally, we'll go through how to score an evaluation. I'm a firm believer that uh, if you do something and you score it, you will probably get more buy-in. Most people want to know how they, how they set up, how they compare to either a previous year, a previous facility, or to maybe their peers. And so we have some models that will help you uh, evaluate that system and give you a score. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about scoring the positives and the negatives about it. So let's spend a little bit of time getting familiar with why we would even want to be here. We've all developed our safety programs. We've gone online, we've taken a safety program, and we've put our name on it, and maybe we've customized it, and it's, it's working really well. Um, we know what our, our losses are, but is it, is it really the safety process that's working, or again, is it luck? So let's talk a little bit about why we would evaluate our safety process. The first thing you want to think about is, do you know if it's working, and can you verify what processes are working? An example is you may have a fall protection plan in place now with the new standard in uh, the 1910 standards. You put it in place last year in response to the standard. Is it working? I, I threw all this money and time into it. Is it working? We can take a look at that. That would just be one component of a, a complete safety process evaluation. So we need to know if those processes are working. And if you notice, I call them processes versus programs because I believe a program has an end in sight, a process is a continuous evaluation. The next reason you might want to evaluate your, your system is to compare for management performance evaluations. I've worked with several customers that uh, they actually use their site safety evaluations or safety audits as a core uh, fundamental evaluation tool for managers' performance reviews. It may even affect their bonuses. Heck, I was just dealing with a client uh, recently that probably 20% of their bonus is based on safety. And of that 20%, a portion of that is based on the evaluation scores that they may receive. And obviously, there's some variables in there on how they rate those. Another reason you may want to evaluate your process is, are you doing what you said you're going to do? You've developed a safety program. You've got uh, different things going on. You think it's working, and you just want to make sure that it is. And, and keep in mind, some of these evaluations can be done internally, or they can be done with the help of either Houseman Johnson or even another a third party. So we keep that in mind. Probably the biggest reason that many people do safety process evaluations is to compare your effectiveness, either year over year, location to location, maybe even division to division, and even sometimes department to department. However, the last one typically isn't used, uh, done very often. I do find that usually the first three up there bullet points are the ones that are, are usually uh, done, and usually it's a year-over-year -year evaluation. Again, are we doing what we said we were doing, and are we following through what we said we are? And we'll get into some of the nuts and bolts of the evaluation a little bit later so you understand a little better on how we come up with how are we doing in a comparison fashion. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And I always want to keep it in the back of our mind that the, the main reason many people do evaluations and audits are to make sure they're compliant with the safety regulations they are responsible for, whether it's OSHA, whether it's DOT, whether you have internal uh, requirements that you've set that you want to follow, uh, NFPA regulations, uh, you know, electrical safety is probably the biggest one I think about where employees can follow OSHA, but if you want to really get down to the nitty gritty and you've got any electricians that are working hot, they need to follow the NFPA 70E standard. You might even do it for uh, ANSI compliance reasons. Um, machine guarding, for those of you that have equipment in your shops and your plants, think about your guarding exposures and have you, are you following the ANSI standards? And if you are, then we can think about better compliance. So those are the main reasons that I find people doing uh, process evaluations. So what should be evaluated? So we talked a little bit about why, let's talk about what. What are we doing when we evaluate our safety process? Well, we're essentially evaluating basically the work that your facility is doing to keep their employees healthy and safe. And we wanna make sure that we're, the systems we have in place are really doing the things that we want them to, not only from a compliance standpoint, but an employee involvement and an employee, employee uh, benefit uh, standpoint. And in order to do that, we need to think about things that we have to evaluate. So I often think about some of the leading and trailing indicators. Many 
facilities I work with track their trailing indicators in many different ways. That's important. And I'll talk a little bit about those trailing indicators in a second. But I think it's the leading indicators that really tell you the true story of what's going to happen. We cannot prevent anything that has happened in the past. But we can take and we can improve the process now for the future and keep our employees safe. So if we look at the past results, we need to pay attention to what happened and make sure we don't do that again, but we also need to take a look at what are we doing going forward to prevent those things in the past from happening. So think about your leading and trailing indicators. In a process evaluation, you evaluate both. You evaluate the trailing indicators, which are your dart rates, your incident rate, you know, the things that OSHA requires you to, to track. And those are, are, are important, and they do tell a story. Some people track their mod rate. Some people even use uh, tracking systems such as number of injuries per sales volume and a, a litany of other things that look backwards as to what you're doing. But if you really have a good safety process, you're going to start tracking your leading indicators, and these are the things that we tend to audit or evaluate when we evaluate your safety process. Those things might include committee meetings. You have safety committees. Are they meeting regularly? If they're meeting regularly, Who's attending? You've got 10 people on your safety committee. Are we getting at least 80% attendance from those 10 people on the safety committee? If not, why? Is that really an effective committee? Are we tracking our inspections? We may hold a manager responsible for doing inspections. They may do them, but then we also have to track how they're doing them, the results, the closure gaps on, uh, on problem issues and things like that. Are we tracking our training sessions? the quality of our incident analysis, or as many people like to call it, accident investigation. If we track those things and we evaluate them, we can build on those. They may be doing exactly what we want them to, to do, and they'll, they'll score very highly in an audit, or they might have some minor gaps that need to be corrected in order to get the most uh, benefit out of those, those systems. So think about the trailing and leading indicators when you take a look at doing a safety assessment. Some of the safety assessments I'm going to share with you, and I'm only going to share the caption portions of it because they're fairly lengthy, um, do talk about or have you evaluate your trailing indicators. But it's typically not a very highly scored part of the safety audit. We lead more into or deal more with looking at the leading indicators. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about some of the safety, or safety tools that we might have. So typical safety and health evaluation uh, may have different looks. I use two different safety and health evaluations, and they're scored differently. And I do that for a couple reasons. I usually like to sit down with a customer and go over what they want evaluated, why they want evaluated, and then I provide them with some options, and we come up with a tool that's going to work for them. Keep in mind, every safety process evaluation is going to be very specific to an organization and, it, and maybe even to a division of a company. So keep that in the back of your mind. We may customize things for that purpose. So on a typical evaluation, you may evaluate many different things, but here's a list of about 19 or 20 items that would be evaluated in a typical safety audit. Each one of these items may have anywhere from five to 30 items inside them that are evaluated. You may look at the management Leadership, what are they doing to promote safety and health in your organization? And again, it takes a long time to do a safety audit because you have to look at the documentation, go through interviewing process, and I'll get that into that in a second. As you go down a couple steps and you get down to number 8.1 through 8.13, you'll see we're looking at regulatory items. Yes, we have to do those, but are we doing them effectively? And then the safety evaluation that, that I use Customarily, we not only look at what is compliant, but what is best practices. Are we doing things above and beyond what OSHA may require so that we are better than our peers, our competing, our, our com competition? That's the whole goal behind this. And then we get back into some, uh, some things that are regulatory, but yet they're more administrative things like industrial hygiene. Yes, we've got to do air monitoring. Yes, we have to do uh, qualitative and quantitative analysis, but are we doing them in a systematic process? Are we doing safety inspections for things that are, may not be required by the regulations? Are we doing incident investigation 
and, and what's the quality of those? And so we look at those things and, and we build on, on the safety processes you have. So as you go through a safety audit, there's so many different things that need to be evaluated. You may find it to be overbearing, but if you actually have a process to evaluate this with using uh, some set goals and objectives and uh, tools, it, it becomes a little more manageable. I find if I would walk out into a facility and they'd say, hey, Rick, do a safety evaluation of my physical facility, I can do that and I can point out all the safety hazards, or at least the ones I observe, and provide that back to you. But if we just do that and we go and correct them, are we really going back and evaluating why that hazard was there? And that's what this tool will do, to look at why that hazard existed and was it systematically a problem within your organization. So it really looks at the systems and processes you have within your organization. So the next slide is a little bit about not so much what should be evaluated, but some, some of the things that you would need to have available when you do a complete safety and health evaluation. Obviously, safety programs. We need to know what you said you're going to do. We might look at your OSHA logs. Again, a trailing indicator, but uh, something we want to look at. Most of the other things are more leading indicators. Yes, we will look at your drug and alcohol program. Uh, if you have one, we want to make sure it's done right. We want to make sure that you're getting some bang for your buck. Uh, we'll look at plant inspections. We'll look at fleet programs, things that are not required by law. You may not have any DOT regulated vehicles, but yet you have people driving for company business. We'd want to evaluate that because there's a huge exposure there that we want to make sure you're controlling to the best of your ability. So when you think about all these things, you got to think about the documents that might be needed. You may have a stack of documents, either uh, in a file, paper file, or it may just be a stack on your computer that we're going to have to look at. But these are the types of things that need to be evaluated when you do a, a full safety and health audit. And again, these are just typical documents. There may be more once we dig a little deeper into the audit. The other thing you want to take a look at is uh, a tool that OSHA has put out recently, and uh, it's the Recommended Practices for Safety and Health Programs. They basically have seven uh, components to the Safety and Health Program. It's, uh, later on, I have a link to that uh, particular uh, Safety and Health Program. And for all of you that are looking at developing your Safety and Health Programs or want to make sure you're developing them adequately, you may want to look at this and take a look at, do you have management leadership? Do you have worker participation. These are two of the components that are required. The other five would include hazard identification and assessment. Do you have hazard prevention programs? Are you doing good education and training? Have you gone back and evaluated your program? And that's really what this webinar is about, is the evaluation part of it. And are you communicating to others, like contractors on your site, staffing agencies? Are you acting as a good host employer uh, bringing other employees onto your site doing work for you. And I think this uh, safety and health uh, tool that OSHA has put together for programs is actually a, a nice tool that most companies can use to get uh, at least get themselves up and running in the safety and health practice. So think about that. There are a few other tools that you may want to consider. Um, just recently, uh, ISO came out with uh, ISO 45001. This is a uh, safety and health tool that's used, it's a global tool, but it can be used on a local basis. Um, it's actually a step up above 18,001, as most of you may know, if you're uh, on ISO facility, 18,001 is the safety portion of 9,001 and, and 12,001, and it actually uh, provides you with guidance on how to uh, evaluate and implement a safety process. Those are some really nice tools that are available. I provided the link for you, so if you download the program or the webinar, you can also go to that. The one issue I will caution you, there is a cost uh, to uh, obtaining these uh, ISO tools. Um, it's a fairly steep cost, but if you feel that safety and health is a priority, uh, it's probably not a cost that would be too burdensome. Uh, the next area that I find beneficial is the ANSI standard. And ANSI, for those of you that may not know, stands for the American National Standards Institute. They provide a lot of uh, consensus standards, not regulatory standards. And uh, this tool is, is a nice tool. Uh, it's uh, used by many uh, facilities and it's just another tool that you can use. Uh, the third tool would be that safety and health program that OSHA has uh, put out. Great tool to use, just some things to think about in terms of 
developing some tools for you to, to look at. The last tool, um, and I don't have a link here because it's a fairly lengthy uh, process, is what we call the Halsman Johnson Safety Management System Evaluation. Now, that's the name we put on it, and basically it goes through, if you go back a few slides, and, and I showed you the slide with the uh, 19 to 20 items, that's what this looks at. It looks at each one of those items, elements, individually, and then, like I said, with anywhere from five to 30 elements that are specifically evaluated, rated, and then provided comments on what's efficient and done correctly, and then some of your gaps or deficiencies. So those are just some tools. For anyone wanting a, a further review of the uh, safety management, safety evaluations, feel free to contact myself uh, after the uh, webinar, and we can uh, walk you through that and show you what it, it entails. Um, we actually use two different systems, so uh, this, this system is the one that I, I tend to, to gravitate toward. I just think it's more comprehensive. Uh, but it's not for everyone. It may not be a tool that everyone finds useful because of the time commitment, and I'll talk about that in a second. So as we move on, we also need to think about you've now got a tool that you're going to use. Now, how do we go ahead and evaluate your process? So what are we going to do? Well, basically, I, I use some guidelines when people ask me what is my commitment. And I can tell you that for a facility with 50 to 200 employees, it's typically going to take me two full days. I put one to two days, but I typically almost never can get one done in, in one day. It's usually a two-day process. And that's just with one person. And uh, I would say it's, it's fairly comprehensive, but sometimes sometimes I, I, I ask for a little more time. I've done, a, I've done facilities like this uh, in three days only because of the complexity of that business. Um, and, and again, everyone knows their own business, and we all think our businesses are very complex, and, and they are, but uh, some are just take a little bit more because more of the OSHA standards may apply. If you don't have confined spaces that you're entering, we probably eliminate an hour, hour and a half of evaluation. If you don't have uh, a fleet of any significant sense, we eliminate some of the audit requirements. So think about that. I have done some facilities where it's taken me up to a full week. We have an opening conference on Monday at, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're closing up probably around noon to 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Uh, because it does take that long. There are some facilities we may have an audit team where we might bring in a number of evaluators. There might be someone from your company that wants to be part of the team. We might bring in another Houseman Johnson employee, whatever it is. We might bring in uh, another third party to do the evaluation. But uh, I just did one a, a few months ago back, and uh, it was a facility of about 300 employees, and it took me approximately four and a half days to do the evaluation. And mainly because I'm familiar with the facility, so I didn't have to do a lot of familiarization with their processes. And then finally, you could also take one of our existing uh, processes or evaluation tools and customize it. And then I can't tell you how long it's going to take. It just depends on what you want audited and how we want to audit it. And again, the nice thing about customizing it, it really fits the needs of your organization. We can put in some of your, your specific uh, safety processes that you have and we can audit it to your process, which is usually the best way to go. So then, what is, it, what is a safety audit? Well, when we talk about our how to evaluate, we think about what is the process. So we show up on the opening day, we have an opening conference with all the stakeholders, uh, we hopefully get the highest level of management in, at that facility involved in, a, in the opening conference. They may not be there that much longer after that. They may uh, use someone else to facilitate the actual evaluation. Well, you definitely have to have an opening conference. And that, and that opening conference, I usually have an agenda of things I'm going to look at, some, sometimes time frames, and I make sure I, people are available during those time frames that I need to speak with them or need them for the evaluation. So we'll do a, a process review, inclu including programs. Again, that may be uh, done all at one time or it may be split out over that day or two or, or five days, depending on what's going, going to be happening. But the, the next three elements are real critical in any safety process evaluation, and that is if it's going to be done right, you need to in, interview uh, a certain number of managers and supervisors. And we're going to interview them based on what their responsibilities are for safety, uh, how they're handling those safety responsibilities, and what they're doing to improve the safety in their uh, respected areas. 
Uh, we also will do a physical plant evaluation. That basically gives us an indication of are you doing what you say you're going to do? Are your employees doing what they, you said they were going to do? And it gives us some input as to the physical uh, uh, environment. And I think that's critical. Even though most, uh, most injuries are caused because of behaviors, a physical evaluation will give us an idea if those behaviors are complying with our safety and health process. So I think that's important. And then another critical step is employee interviews. Uh, I don't usually use a percentage of number of employees I want to interview. It's going to be based on the type of areas I find that need further evaluation. But if I had a plant of 100 employees, I'm probably going to interview at least 10 to 15 employees. Some of them may be short, some may be longer. So we have those going on. And then we have the data compilation. That's usually given give or take uh, a few hours to put that all together, put it into our, our format, calculate it out, and then meet with everyone back and have a closing conference. So if I'm doing a one to two day audit, typically that's gonna be done in the last hour of the second day or last day. The same with if I do a week long audit. It just again depends on uh, the complexity of your organization, your processes, and what we need to, need to do. So I hope everyone understands that this, this is a, a pretty time consuming uh, process and it can take quite a bit of time, but it can also be very beneficial because it will provide us with target areas that we need to work on. So everyone usually wants to fit, figure out what the final outcomes are, and usually most facilities want to score. They want to see how they're doing compared to someone else. So we've devised a scoring system. I use a couple different scoring systems. I tend to gravitate towards the, uh, the more subjective scoring system, and I'll explain that in a second why. Um, and it's really not that subjective, but some people interpret it that way. I just have to understand it. I don't have time to go through all the details this morning. But uh, the score can basically validate what's working. So if I evaluate your lockout tagout program and you score a 10 out of a possible 10 points, that means it's working, it's working effectively, and it's been in place for a while. But if I score a three, it's not working, or I don't have any, I don't have any identified. Uh, program in place, but maybe I'm still doing it, but I just don't have any documentation behind it. You might score a three, but we'll identify those gaps. And I think the scoring system is important because scoring can be done in a couple of ways, and I'll talk about that in the next few slides. The other option is, and I do have a couple uh, customers I've worked with over the years, that you, they don't you do any scoring. It's either a yes or a no on whether you're complying or not complying, along with comments. If, it, if there's a no, there has to be comments that indicate what's deficient in that process. So they might have 250 points that they're auditing, and if they have 100 no's, they're gonna have 100 gaps that are identified, and then they're ranked, and they're based, and then they fix those based on those rankings. And that's, that's a nice system. It gets away from the competitive part of it, or people working the safety process just for a score instead of the real reason, and that is to protect your employees. So we think about that. And then you could also go with just a narrative. There's no yes or no, but maybe at the end of the audit, you provide a narrative on some of the things that are working, some of the things that aren't. I try to stay away from those. I've seen those used. Um, I'm not a big proponent of them, but I bring it up for talking points mainly. So let's talk about those scoring systems. So I've, I've used the scoring system. I've got two of them uh, devised. One is a zero to two system. Um, I have used this. I typically use these on uh, what I would say smaller facilities. Uh, those of 50 employees or under, or maybe up to 100 employees. And the only rhyme or reason for that is uh, it's a little uh, more efficient. Um, and as you can see, if uh, I would uh, be evaluating something and uh, you only are 49% compliant or less, you are not getting any credit for that, that uh, auditable item. If you s score in between 50 and 99%, you'll get one point. And if you have 100% of that, auditable item completed and done up to our expectations, then you will score a two point, two points. Um, it keeps the scoring a little more succinct, but uh, you do have to do a little math to figure these out. And then the score is reported as a percentage of possible points. So in the audit with zero to two, typical uh, facility may have 300 to 350 points available to them. And you know, obviously their goal is to get 350 points, <coughs> excuse me, and that's the way that, that would work. And it, it does work fairly, fairly efficiently. 
efficiently. Um, so the percent of values can be interpreted as follows. So if I'm using a zero to two um, evaluation system and I score 50% on that audit, I'm about average. I'm about average. It's the whole audit is designed to, to make sure that if you're scoring superior or excellent, you are doing things way above and beyond any OSHA requirements and you're doing uh, basically best practices throughout the organization. I can tell you I've done hundreds of these audits using this system and the other scoring system, and uh, very seldom do we see anyone score above 90%. Uh, I mean, we do have them occasionally, but that's why 81% is still ex uh, pretty exceptional, because it still gives you something to, to shoot for in the future. Um, I can't even think of an audit where I've actually given out 100% in the scoring process. So again, these are uh, some, some areas that we think about and you can see the descriptions and read those for yourself. The other system that we use is a scoring system of zero to 10. And as you can see, um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a little bit more of uh, definitions added to the audit on each one of these descriptions. But uh, you can see that you could be doing something, but you might not have any standardization in process or any process in place. So we're gonna give you some credit. So you may be doing fall protection. So you provide everyone with harnesses and you've got good you know, lanyards and everything like that, but you don't really have a program. You don't have a process. So you're still gonna get some credit, but you're not gonna get very much credit. You might score you know, in that uh, one to four range or somewhere in that area. Now you put a program in place, you meet some of the criteria that's explained in the uh, safety management system, and then we start elevating your score. And obviously, Anything over an 80 here would be good. So I wanted to go through and give you some uh, examples of, of using the scoring system. So using the scoring system of zero to two, I review 15 incident analysis or accident investigations. I see that uh, maybe only a few of them make the grade in terms of having all the information in there that we need. We have root causes, we have corrective actions, we've uh, acted on those corrective actions, we've closed out that incident analysis, and everything is good, and we've really benefited from doing that incident analysis. But only a few of them did that. The other 10 or so weren't very good. You score zero. You're in between that zero and 49%. Now, I find that eight to 14 of them are good. Now we score one point. If all 15 of them were good, now we're going to score two points. So I think you get the gist of it. That's the, really a, a nice scoring system. It's very concise. Take that same scenario, and use the zero to 10 scoring, and you can see the variables there. Um, so I review 15 of them. Uh, I get a zero to seven that are make the grade. Uh, you could score as low as a zero, but typically you're gonna score at a three to a six, um, typically, because there's probably something in place um, that will give you some score. Uh, likewise, if I find eight to 14 of them uh, poor, you might score from a five to 10, typically more in that five to seven range. The nine and 10 are reserved for uh, facilities that are doing it year over year and showing improvement year over year. So you can see how that scoring system works. Again, it's more of a company by company, facility by facility, a comfort level on which system they wanna want to use. So that's a way we can score things and then we can we can deal with that as we as we go down the line. So so the scoring options are are basically the whole intent is to let that site or that facility know what the scoring system is and make sure they're aware of how we're gonna score it. That's also usually part of my opening conference if it's the first time through the safety management system evaluation. If it's the second or third time, we may not spend so much time going over the scoring and what's going to happen. One thing I will recommend is that for consistency purposes, once you pick one, you better stick with it for, for years because otherwise you're not really comparing apples to apples, either from facility to facility or from year to year. And I think that's really what we're trying to gain is uh, how are we improving? What areas are we improving? And obviously, are our leading indicators improving and making our, our processes safer? Or is it just that, hey, we just happen to have a great year because you know what? We got lucky. And, and we all know that, that that adage happens. But if it's done through a system, then we know it's gonna be able to be sustained for years on out. And you'll see that in organizations that sustain great safety records, they usually have systems in place to help them all get through to those levels. Um, the other thing I would mention is that evaluation should be done at determined intervals. What do I mean by that? Well, you may have facilities, as we jump ahead, the frequency of evaluations is something we think about when we do this. 
So if you think about the evaluations, it's going to depend on what stage you feel your safety process is in. But I would think that if you take on this endeavor, you're going to do it at least annually. You may cut that back depending on scores. So if, if you uh, score 80% or higher on your first audit, maybe you don't do it next year for that facility. Uh, but if you score anything less than 80%, uh, maybe from that 60 to 80%, you're going to do it at least yearly. And then if you are going to be under 60, you're not only going to do it yearly, but we're also going to have maybe a conference call or meetings or something to do some follow-ups and close out those gaps. Because our goal is ultimately to work with you and get you up to that 80%. It gives you a tool to see how to get to that 80%. And usually when I, I make recommendations in my uh, safety management system evaluation, we make recommendations on what needs to be done and we'll discuss the hows, whens, and whats uh, of that as we close out that, that process. So, with time running a little short, I wanted to get into uh, some final thoughts. So you've taken the safety evaluation uh, tool, you've taken a look at it, and now you've got to make some, some decisions on what you want to do. So the first thing you need to do is decide what system. Do you want to use the zero to two system or you want to use the zero to 10 system? That's really not a big concern of mine, but you have to look at within those systems what is being evaluated. <clears throat> Excuse me. So decide what is going to be evaluated and, and what's going to be done. I will give you a little advice that most systems, once you start evaluating it, take about three to five years to get most facilities up to that 80% or higher mark. Why? Because you can throw all the resources you want at it, but you still have to sustain it. And it takes time to sustain things. And if you're not doing it for, if you're only doing it for a year, you're not going to get full credit for most of the auditable items. So it's going to take some time. And then we need to see those processes mature. And we find that out through the employee interviews, through the management interviews. What is working? What's not working? Through the written documentation you have. You said you did it, you document, we evaluate the process, the, the, the location, and we see that it's done in the facility, and we confer that. So decide what system you want. Decide whether you want to score it or not. I would really encourage that you do score it. Um, I'm not saying that everyone has to. Um, I've done safety evaluations with no scoring system, just a yes or a no. But I really encourage the scoring system so that you have a barometer on where you're at. That's, that's really important. The nice thing is, is you can also add company-specific guidelines. So you might have a, uh, a safety committee. You might have developed some specific guidelines for that committee. You may want to include that in the audit and the evaluation. You may do uh, regular system evaluations, uh, inspections, whatever you might, might call them, and you want to include that. Uh, you may require them to be done quarterly. And, uh, and that might be as high as you ever expect that to be, so instead of Monthly, we change that to quarterly, and that's an evaluated item, and we score accordingly. The other thing we want to think about is using existing guidelines. I, sh I shared with you, uh, well, I didn't really share with you because we don't have time to bring it up, but the OSHA safety and health programs, the ANSI safety and health uh, tool, the ISO 45001 tool, those are guidelines you can use, or you can take the Hausman Johnson guidelines, which are available to any client, and we can, we can share that with you, and you can use those guidelines for evaluations in the future. Um, keep in mind, though, there's a time commitment. I mentioned anywhere from one to five days for a typical facility audit. Um, that's just the beginning. We still, that's, that's the auditor's time. Think about your employees' and management time, and think about what, you're, what time you're going to spend putting all those documents together for the audit process. Um, so there is a time commitment, but the time commitment is well worth it because usually what happens is you see your incident rates, you see their DART rates, you see your OSHA rates, uh, excuse me, mod rates go down. But more importantly, you also get a higher level of employee commitment, uh, involvement, excuse me, management commitment, and so forth. And ultimately, I think that's what we're shooting for is to get the employee involvement, the management commitment, and then the other things will fall in place. Our, our losses will uh, be curtailed and so forth. But uh, when you really think about it, once you get that commitment, get that commitment of time, get to it and basically think about how you're going to prevent injuries and the quality of work that you're going to have done in your facility. 
So as I indicated earlier, this is a, a system that takes some time to put in place, but really what it does is it provides you with a guiding a tool, a, a barometer on where you're at. It gives you objectives that you need to meet throughout uh, the year. It gives you uh, time frames for things to be done. But really what it does is it gives everyone that's part of that safety process, all the managers and supervisors, kind of tools to look at and help them on what they should be doing. And again, it's a regulatory evaluation, but it really, it really stresses more on the, on the management processes you have in place to guide those regulatory items. So with that, I'm going to uh, uh, wrap this thing up and, and close it. I would just, uh, just like to say thanks for everyone for calling in today. Um, hopefully you got some uh, good information, but more importantly, if you need anything, such as the tools that uh, I've talked about, feel free to uh, contact us and we can help you uh, get more familiar with those tools that are available to our, our customers. Thank you, everyone. Um, We'll go ahead and um, pull up the continuing education slide in just a moment. If you do have any questions for Rick right at this moment, please feel free to type them in the question feature of the GoToWebinar application. Um, otherwise, I also had um, the screen up with Rick's contact information. If you find that as you review the information that um, he presented today that you have questions, please feel free to reach out to him via uh, phone or email. Thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar and we hope to see you next time.